Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I grew up with the knowledge of God and the presence of God, but I knew I needed to know Him better. I've always thought of God as a harsh father. His teachings just really brought me back to, you know, knowing who God is and recognizing it. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is my end of my first week teaching on the believer's authority. And I've said all week long that I think that this is just foundational and this is what so many people are missing in their understanding. They think that God is just moving independent of us and they don't understand that God only flows through us. So I've got this book in English and in Spanish, and then we have a study guide that's also in English and in Spanish. This is specifically for you to be able to teach these truths to other people. And then we have the whole teaching, video and audio on USB, and then we have uh, DVDs that are taken from my television program, also another set of DVDs that were taken from a live teaching that I did, and then we also have that on CD. So we got a lot of different formats. We want you to be able to get this teaching. And you can also go to my website and you can look at the archive teachings. So I've already said a huge amount of stuff this week. There's no way I can go back and summarize everything. Yesterday I was talking about creation and that when God created the heavens and the earth, He spoke them into existence. God's power, His authority, His dominion is always released by words. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Death and life, and not only in our words, but God is the original of all of these things. And the authority his power and authority was released through words. So in Genesis chapter 1, He said, let the earth bring forth animals and trees and plants and stuff. And then in verse 26 is where I was yesterday. Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man in our own image and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And I spent quite a bit of time yesterday trying to make this point. Uh, I know that not everybody watches the program every day, and so... Uh, it's important that you don't miss this point that when God says something, it's binding to Him. In Psalms chapter 89, verse 34, He says, My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone forth out of my lips. When God says something, it's binding. It's a contract. It's a covenant with Him. He cannot lie. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. It also says in Psalms 138, verse 2, that He has exalted His Word above His name. And it's just impossible for God to lie. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 says, He upholds all things by the Word of His power. If God was to break His Word, the universe would self-destruct. It's held together by the integrity of His Word. The reason this is so important is because when God said out, out of words, you have dominion, you rule over this earth, then that bound God. That limited what God could do. Another verse I used yesterday, Psalm 78, 41, where he says, they limited the Holy One of Israel. This teaching that God does whatever He wants to is a deadly teaching, and it totally undermines the authority that He's given us. And it causes all kinds of problems. You know, there was a man... Well, I read this story about him. And when he was a young man, he and his little sister were very, very close. His little sister got some kind of sickness. I forget it now, the details. But anyway, they were Presbyterians. They went to a Presbyterian church that is really strong on sovereignty of God, that everything that happens is God's will. And the girl died, and this boy had prayed for her to be healed. She wasn't healed. And the people in leadership in the church came and said, well, this is God's will. God needed another little angel in heaven. And this guy said, if there is a God, I hate him. And he is now one of the largest uh, broadcasting, uh, I don't know what you call them, but anyway, the person that owns broadcasting around the world, he owns one of the largest networks. And his stated purpose is to turn people away from a Judeo-Christian ethic 
BECAUSE PEOPLE SAID THAT GOD IS THE ONE THAT KILLED HIS LITTLE SISTER. AND IF GOD DID THAT, IF THERE WAS A GOD, HE HATED HIM. I TELL YOU, THIS HAS TURNED A LOT OF PEOPLE AGAINST GOD. I ACTUALLY WATCHED A TELEVISION PROGRAM, AND THIS IS BY A GUY WHO'S A FRIEND OF MINE. HE LOVES GOD, BUT HE BELIEVES THAT EVERYTHING THAT HAPPENS IS ORDAINED BY GOD. AND I SAW THIS WOMAN ON HIS TELEVISION PROGRAM. HE WAS INTERVIEWING HER, AND THIS WOMAN AND HER DAUGHTER WERE BOTH ADDUCTED AT GUNPOINT, TAKEN OUT TO A REMOTE PLACE. HE RAPED BOTH OF THEM, AND THEN HE HAD THEM LAY ON THEIR STOMACH, AND HE SHOT BOTH OF THEM IN THE BACK OF THE HEAD. THE DAUGHTER DIED. THE MOTHER RECOVERED. SHE WAS ALIVE. SHE HAD SOME PHYSICAL PROBLEM, BUT SHE RECOVERED. AND SHE WAS ON THIS PROGRAM AND BASICALLY SAYING, WE DON'T KNOW WHY GOD DID THIS, WHY GOD ALLOWED THIS, BUT GOD HAS A PURPOSE. ALL THINGS WORK TOGETHER FOR GOOD, AND THEY WERE BLAMING GOD FOR IT. THAT IS WRONG. GOD DID NOT CAUSE THAT MAN TO ABDUCT THESE WOMEN, TO RAPE THEM, TO KILL THE DAUGHTER AND, and SHOOT THE MOTHER IN THE BACK OF THE HEAD. GOD'S NOT THE ONE THAT DOES THAT. AND I TELL YOU, IF YOU BELIEVE THAT, IT JUST, IT'S GOING TO TURN A LOT OF PEOPLE OFF FROM THE LORD TO BLAME GOD FOR EVERY ROTTEN THING THAT HAPPENS IN THIS WORLD. GOD IS NOT THE ONE WHO'S LETTING THINGS HAPPEN. WE WERE THE ONES THAT WERE GIVEN CONTROL OVER THIS EARTH, NOT GOD. LET ME TURN OVER AND JUST DEAL WITH THIS VERSE. I KNOW THAT AS I'M TALKING, SOME PEOPLE ARE THINKING, WELL, WHAT ABOUT ROMANS CHAPTER 8, VERSE 28, AND WE KNOW THAT ALL THINGS WORK TOGETHER FOR GOOD TO THEM WHO LOVE GOD, TO THEM WHO ARE THE CALLED ACCORDING TO HIS PURPOSE. SO LET ME JUST EXPOUND ON THIS FOR JUST A MOMENT. I'LL GET BACK TO TALKING ABOUT THE AUTHORITY, BUT IT REALLY DOES DEAL WITH THE SAME THING. SO IN ROMANS CHAPTER 8 AND IN VERSE 26, IT SAYS, LIKEWISE, THE SPIRIT ALSO HELPETH OUR INFIRMITIES, FOR WE KNOW NOT WHAT WE SHOULD PRAY FOR AS WE OUGHT, BUT THE SPIRIT ITSELF MAKETH INTERCESSION FOR US WITH GROANINGS WHICH CANNOT BE UTTERED. AND HE THAT SEARCHETH THE HEARTS KNOWETH WHAT IS THE MIND OF THE SPIRIT, BECAUSE HE MAKETH INTERCESSION FOR THE SAINTS ACCORDING TO THE WILL OF GOD. AND WE KNOW THAT ALL THINGS WORK TOGETHER FOR GOOD TO THEM THAT LOVE GOD, TO THEM WHO ARE THE CALLED ACCORDING TO HIS PURPOSE. SO LET ME JUST START HERE BY SAYING THAT the, THIS VERSE STARTS WITH THE CONJUNCTION AND. THE WORD AND MEANS THAT THIS LINKS IT TO THE PREVIOUS STATEMENT. AND THE PREVIOUS STATEMENT IN VERSES 26 AND 27 IS ABOUT THE HOLY SPIRIT MAKING INTERCESSION FOR US WITH GROANINGS THAT CANNOT BE UTTERED. YOU KNOW, WITHOUT ME GOING INTO ALL OF THIS GREEK AND, and GETTING INTO A LONG DISCUSSION, LET ME JUST SAY THAT THE WORD THAT IS USED THERE FOR WITH GROANINGS THAT CANNOT BE UTTERED, MAKING INTERCESSION FOR US. IT'S ACTUALLY <clears throat> FOUR GREEK WORDS PUT TOGETHER. IT'S A COMPOUND WORD, AND IT LITERALLY MEANS TO TAKE HOLD TOGETHER WITH US. NOW, THAT'S SIGNIFICANT BECAUSE THE HOLY SPIRIT DOESN'T INTERCEDE FOR US WITHOUT OUR PARTICIPATION. IF HE DID, WELL, THEN THE WILL OF GOD WOULD ALWAYS BE DONE, AND THAT CERTAINLY IS NOT THE CASE. AND WE DON'T INTERCEDE WITHOUT THE HOLY SPIRIT IT'S NOT LIKE WE JUST are HAVE TO DO THIS IN OUR OWN STRENGTH. BUT WHEN YOU START INTERCEDING AND PRAYING, THE HOLY SPIRIT TAKES HOLD TOGETHER WITH YOU WITH GROANINGS THAT CANNOT BE UTTERED. AND WHEN THAT HAPPENS, THEN WE KNOW THAT ALL THINGS WORK TOGETHER FOR GOOD TO THEM THAT LOVE GOD. SO THAT RIGHT THERE PUTS THIS IN A TOTALLY DIFFERENT LIGHT. IF IT WAS JUST THE HOLY SPIRIT INTERCEDING AND EVERYTHING ALWAYS WORKS TOGETHER FOR GOOD, WELL, THEN EVERY SINGLE THING THAT HAPPENS IN OUR LIFE WOULD ALWAYS BE POSITIVE. IT WOULD ALWAYS HAVE SOME REDEMPTIVE PURPOSE. AND I GUARANTEE YOU THAT IS NOT THE CASE. YOU KNOW, I'VE HAD TWO CASES OF PEOPLE THAT I KNOW PERSONALLY THAT HAVE COMMITTED SUICIDE JUST RECENTLY, AND IT HAS CAUSED A LOT OF DAMAGE TO OTHER PEOPLE AND STUFF, AND I GUARANTEE YOU IT'S NOT WORKING TOGETHER FOR GOOD. IT'S DEMONIC. AND NOT EVERYTHING THAT WORKS TOGETHER FOR GOOD. SO IT'S DEPENDING UPON THIS INTERCESSION TAKING PLACE. AND THEN ON TOP OF THAT, IN VERSE 28, IT DIDN'T SAY THAT ALL THINGS THAT HAPPEN COME FROM GOD OR ARE PERMITTED BY GOD. IT DIDN'T SAY THAT. IT JUST SAID THAT GOD CAN WORK IT TOGETHER FOR GOOD. AND I GAVE SOME EXAMPLES EARLIER THIS WEEK ABOUT MY SON FALLING OUT OF A TRUCK, AND HE LEARNED TO LAY DOWN AND OBEY ME BUT I DIDN'T PUSH HIM OUT OF THAT TRUCK. I DIDN'T WILL THAT. BUT I CAN TAKE ANYTHING THAT HAPPENS AND WORK IT TOGETHER FOR GOOD. 
I've even said this about some of the problems that we're dealing with about the city trying to hinder us and stop us from building and doing things. And I've told people, I said, look, it doesn't matter. All they can do is hinder us and delay it. They can't stop it. And I said, we'll, it'll all work together for good. We'll come out better off. So I believe that anything that happens to us, God can work it together for good, but that doesn't mean that God caused it. God didn't send it. If you believe that, that makes you submit to that problem as being from God, and it makes you passive. And again, it violates James chapter 4, verse 7, where it says you have to resist the devil to see him flee from you. If you believe it's from God, you'll submit to it, thinking that God ultimately has a purpose in it, and that will give Satan the opportunity to continue to fight you. And it also says right here that it works together for good for them that love God. If you don't love God, and this isn't talking about just love in a in a sense that, oh yeah, I love him. You feel uh, you aren't against him, so you figure that you love him. No, this is talking about people that love God, that are following him. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? And there's other scriptures that talk about it's one thing to say that you love God, but you have to prove it in your works and in your actions. So this is talking about people that are submitted to God. So these are two restrictions. First of all, you've got to be operating in a supernatural Holy Spirit inspired, empowered intercession. And if you love God, then these things that happen to you, God can work them together for good. If you aren't interceding, letting the Holy Spirit take hold together with you and intercede, and if you don't love God as expressed in your actions, then all things aren't going to work together for good. And it goes on to say in the last part of this verse, it says it'll work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Over in 1 John chapter 3, it's either verse 8 or 9, it says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So if you are doing things according to his purpose, his purpose is to destroy the works of the devil. If you are yielded to the devil, if you're cooperating with the devil through your actions, it's not going to work together for good. So there's three qualifications on this. It says, first of all, you've got to be operating in this supernatural Holy Spirit empowered intercession. You have to love God and you have to be out to destroy the works of the devil. And if those three things are present in your life, well then sure, whatever the devil throws at you, God can turn around and work it together for good. You know, my son died March the 4th, 2001. And it's a long story. I won't go into the whole thing. But when we were, we, my oldest son, Joshua, called and he said, Dad, I'm sorry to tell you, but Peter is dead. And I asked him what happened. I said, don't let anybody touch him till we get there. And so it was 4.15 in the morning. We got up, got dressed, and it was an hour drive into the hospital where he was. And uh, during that time, I started feeling all of the things that anybody would feel. But you know what? I just refused to get bitter at God, to get angry, to get... Uh, depressed, discouraged, grief. Jesus bore my sorrows and carried my grief. And so I just started praising God, not because I felt like it, but because I wanted to release the power of God and refuse to give in to the sorrow and grief. And so we just started praising God. Anyway, it's a long story, but God showed me some things, brought some things to my remembrance. And uh, I started laughing and I said, this is going to work together for good. I said, the devil is going to be sorry that he ever touched us. Now, see what I was doing. I did not attribute the death of my son to God. If I had thought that God was the one that killed my son, well, then the very best I could have done is just say, oh, God, if it's your will, would you bring him back? And I might have been passive. I could have expressed my desire, I, but I wouldn't have had any authority in that issue. But I knew that God is not the one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That was Jesus speaking. And so I knew that it wasn't God that killed my son. I knew that he wasn't the author of it. And so I started resisting those feelings that would have made me give in and accept and embrace this death. And I started praising God. 
AND I ACTUALLY GOT THE LAUGHING, AND I TOLD JAMIE, I SAID, THIS IS GOING TO WORK TOGETHER FOR GOOD. I BELIEVED WITH ALL OF MY HEART THAT GOD WAS RAISING HIM FROM THE DEAD. AND WHEN WE GOT INTO TOWN, THIS IS BACK BEFORE WE HAD CELL PHONES, SO WE DIDN'T KNOW WHAT WAS HAPPENING FOR ABOUT 45 MINUTES TO AN HOUR AFTER WE GOT THE CALL. AND WHEN WE FINALLY GOT IN, MY OLDEST SON CAME TO THE DOOR TO MEET US, AND HE SAID, I DON'T KNOW WHAT HAPPENED, BUT FIVE OR TEN MINUTES AFTER I CALLED YOU, PETER JUST SAT UP AND STARTED TALKING. HE HAD ALREADY BEEN uh, PUT IN A MORGUE. HE WAS ON A SLAB IN A COOLER. HE WAS STRIPPED NAKED, HAD A TOE TAG ON. HE WAS A WHITE BOY. HE TURNED BLACK. I DON'T KNOW ALL THE REASONS FOR THAT, BUT HIS BODY WAS... HE WAS DEAD. THEY PRONOUNCED HIM DEAD AND PUT HIM IN A MORGUE. AND WHEN WE STARTED PRAYING, HE JUST SAT UP AND STARTED TALKING. AND WHEN WE GOT IN THERE, HE WAS AWAKE AND HE WAS TALKING, AND GOD HAD RAISED HIM FROM THE DEAD. AND GOD WORKED IT TOGETHER FOR GOOD. SO THAT WAS IN 2001. HERE I AM 21 YEARS LATER, 22 YEARS LATER, TALKING ABOUT IT, AND I'M RUBBING THE DEVIL'S NOSE IN IT. I'M USING IT TO ENCOURAGE PEOPLE, TO TELL PEOPLE THAT GOD IS STILL THE SAME YESTERDAY, TODAY, AND FOREVER, AND DOING MIRACLES, AND, I'm, and GOD HAS WORKED IT TOGETHER FOR GOOD. BUT GOD DIDN'T CAUSE IT. GOD CAN USE ANYTHING, BUT HE DIDN'T CAUSE IT. SO AGAIN, LET ME GO BACK TO GENESIS CHAPTER 1 WHERE HE GAVE, HE GAVE DOMINION OVER THIS EARTH TO PEOPLE. AND IN VERSE 27, GENESIS 1, 27, SO GOD CREATED MAN IN HIS OWN IMAGE, IN THE IMAGE OF GOD CREATED HE HIM, MALE AND FEMALE CREATED HE THEM, AND GOD BLESSED THEM, AND GOD SAID... YOU KNOW, THIS IS A LITTLE BIT OF A SIDETRACK, BUT I'VE GOT A TEACHING OUT ON BLESSINGS AND MIRACLES, AND BLESSINGS ARE ALWAYS SPOKEN. GOD'S POWER IS ALWAYS VOICE ACTIVATED. YOU CAN'T RELEASE POWER WITHOUT SPEAKING. GOD SAID, LET US MAKE MAN. GOD CREATED THE HEAVENS AND THE EARTH, SPOKE THEM INTO EXISTENCE. EVERYTHING HE DOES IS WITH WORDS. AND SO HERE IN THE 28TH VERSE, GOD BLESSED THEM AND SAID. WHEN GOD PUTS A BLESSING OVER PEOPLE, HE SPEAKS. THAT'S HOW HE RELEASES THIS POWER AND AUTHORITY. HE TOLD THEM, BE FRUITFUL AND MULTIPLY AND REPLENISH THE EARTH AND SUBDUE IT. YOU KNOW WHAT THIS IS TALKING ABOUT? THE WORD SUBDUE MEANS THAT YOU USE WHATEVER FORCE NECESSARY TO GET THE EARTH, ALL OF THE ANIMALS, THE PLANTS, EVERYTHING, TO OBEY YOU. YOU are HAVE DOMINION OVER IT. I USED THESE VERSES YESTERDAY OUT OF PSALMS CHAPTER 82, VERSE 6, WHERE GOD SAID THAT YOU ARE GOD'S, TALKING ABOUT HIS CREATION, NOT CAPITAL G IN THE SENSE THAT YOU ARE DIVINE, BUT YOU HAVE ABSOLUTE CONTROL AND RULERSHIP OVER THE EARTH. AND SO HE BLESSED THEM AND SAID, BE FRUITFUL AND MULTIPLY AND REPLENISH THE EARTH AND SUBDUE IT. IN OTHER WORDS, IF THERE'S RESISTANCE, YOU'VE GOT THE AUTHORITY TO BRING IT UNDER CONTROL. HE GAVE THEM THAT POWER AND AUTHORITY AND HAVE DOMINION OVER THE FISH OF THE SEA AND OVER THE FOWL OF THE AIR AND OVER EVERY LIVING THING THAT CREEPETH UPON THE EARTH. AND SO HERE'S TWICE IN TWO VERSES THAT GOD GAVE MANKIND DOMINION OVER THE EARTH. AND BY DOING THAT, DID YOU KNOW HE LIMITED HIS OWN CONTROL OF WHAT TAKES PLACE HERE ON THE EARTH. HE GAVE US DOMINION AND POWER AND AUTHORITY. I TELL YOU, THERE'S SO MANY CHRISTIANS THAT ARE JUST PRAYING AND LIKE, SAY, FOR INSTANCE, THEY NEED A FINANCIAL MIRACLE. AND SO THEY'RE PRAYING AND JUST SAYING, OH, GOD, I NEED THIS BILL PAID. I NEED SO MUCH MONEY. AND THEY JUST PRAY AND EXPECT GOD TO JUST DO SOMETHING, TO DROP IT OUT OF HEAVEN. GOD IS NOT GOING TO COUNTERFEIT UNITED STATES CURRENCY OR WHATEVER COUNTRY YOU LIVE IN. MONEY IS NOT GOING TO FALL OUT OF THE SKY. THAT IS NOT HOW GOD DOES IT. IT SAYS IN LUKE CHAPTER 6, VERSE 38, GIVE, AND IT SHALL BE GIVEN UNTO YOU. GOOD MEASURE, PRESSED DOWN, SHAKEN TOGETHER, AND RUNNING OVER, SHALL MEN GIVE INTO YOUR BOSOM. AND IT GOES ON TO SAY, FOR WHATEVER MEASURE YOU USE IS HOW IT'LL BE MEASURED BACK TO YOU. BUT it, NOTICE IT SAYS THAT MEN WILL GIVE INTO YOUR BOSOM. GOD DOESN'T HAVE MONEY. GOD DOESN'T COUNTERFEIT MONEY. THAT'S AGAINST THE LAW. GOD IS GOING TO TOUCH PEOPLE AND PEOPLE ARE GOING TO GIVE FINANCES TO YOU. AND IF YOU DON'T HAVE ANY WAY, IF YOU'RE JUST SHUT UP IN YOUR PRAYER CLOSET PRAYING FOR A MIRACLE, BUT IF YOU DON'T HAVE ANY CONTACT WITH PEOPLE, IF YOU DON'T HAVE AN AVENUE FOR THAT MONEY TO COME UNTO YOU, THEN YOU LIMIT WHAT GOD CAN DO. 
Another scripture goes right along with this is over in Deuteronomy chapter 28, and it says that he would bless, and again, remember what I said about blessings are always spoken. He will bless the work of your hands. Whatever you set your hand unto, he will bless. If you set your hand to nothing, a hundred times zero is zero. All of this fits together. I hope you're following what I'm saying. It goes back to the authority. God gave us authority over this earth. He is not going to move independent of people. Scripture I used earlier in the week, Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. If there's no power working in you, you stop the power of God. He's not going to operate independent of you. He's not going to flow outside of you. He's going to flow through you and through other people. So if you're praying for finances, you got to have an avenue. You got to set your hand unto something. And when you do something, when you take the authority that God has given you and you start doing something, then God blesses it and causes it to grow and multiply. But we've got so many people today that are on welfare. They think that people just owe them something. And please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not against anybody that's on welfare. Anybody could use help briefly, but to live on welfare and this is how you subsist, that's wrong. To be second and third generation welfare recipient is wrong. You are just taking. You should be giving. You go, go set your hand unto something. God can't multiply welfare because you haven't done anything for it. I, you would be better off to get off welfare and go get a job at McDonald's or, or Walmart, being a greeter, do anything. God can bless something that you're doing, but He can't bless charity. He can't bless welfare. You need to set your hand unto something. And man, I know that there are bunches of people right now upset at me because you look at welfare as being your source. I'm trying to get you to see God as your source. And God is not the author of welfare. That is not his system. Giving some people something for nothing is not his system. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10 says that if you don't work, don't eat. That's his system. If somebody needs money, if somebody's in trouble, give them a job. Give them something to do and bless them and help them. But just to give people money with not attached to anything that they're doing is an ungodly system. It violates the Word of God and it goes against this authority. God gave you authority. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He that gives you power to get wealth, that He might establish His covenant as He swear unto your fathers as it is this day. God doesn't give you wealth. He gives you power, an anointing. And then when you go do something, when you set your hand unto something, God will multiply and bless what you set your hand unto. But see, you've got authority. You have the power to get wealth, but if you don't do anything with it, it won't manifest. You have power and authority. It's wrong for you to just pray and wait on God to give you money. You need to go do something and set your hand unto it. Use your authority, do something, and then God will bless it. Man, I got so much to say. Anyway, we're going to continue this next week. I've got this book entitled The Believer's Authority. I've got it in English and in Spanish. And then we also have a uh, study guide that's 300 plus pages that is made specifically to help other people. I have that in English and Spanish. And then we have CDs and DVDs, and we have a USB that has the audio and the video both on it. If you'll listen to our announcer, he'll tell you how you can get these materials. And please call or write and receive these materials today. For 20 years, Andrew Womack has been sharing the message of God's unconditional love and grace through his half-hour television program, Monday through Friday. Now, Andrew is broadcasting a full hour-long teaching each week. When God finds somebody who wants to be a giver and wants to bless somebody else, he will give seed to the sower. He will give seed to people who will sow it and give it to other people. Watch the weekend edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. Learn the power of using your authority and defeating the enemy when you get Andrew's teaching titled, The Believer's Authority. Andrew's complete series, The Believer's Authority, is available in a book, study guide, CD album, or the As Seen on TV DVD album. 
These products are available in either English or Spanish. Also, we have a DVD album recorded live at a ministry event. Additionally, the entire teaching is now available on a USB flash drive that includes both audio and video. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. I'm pleased to announce that we now have my television program translated into Spanish. We have a lot of my materials available in Spanish, but let your friends know that we're now broadcasting our daily program in Spanish. Our Caris Bible College, I believe, is second to none as far as the spiritual material that's being put out and the impact that's being made on students. But did you know our facilities are wanting? We actually had over 550 students that couldn't come this year because they didn't have housing. We need to start providing housing, activity center, cafeteria, all kinds of things. And in order to do that, I need a lot of new partners. I ask you to go to awmi.net slash campus and check it out and become a partner with Karis Bible College today. Before you were even formed in your mother's womb, God already had determined a purpose for your life, a God-given purpose. God has a purpose to train you in what you're called to do, and I tell you, Karis Bible College is the place for that. Man, if you want a life change, come to Karis. Come on to Karis! The next two to three years could be the most powerful time of your life. If you sit under the Word for four hours a day, for five days a week, for two or three years, I guarantee you, you are going to have God speak to you and start revealing purpose to you. Every one of you were created for a purpose. Do you know what that purpose is? I'd like to give you a special invitation to join me on July the 3rd through the 7th for our Summer Family Bible Conference. This is always one of the highlights of our year. We have things specifically for the youth, for children, for the entire family, and we have a musical production. It's just going to be awesome. Remember July the 3rd through the 7th for our Summer Family Bible Conference.